So welcome everyone um, to the Research Parks, my UIRP experience, uh, summer intern experience panel. We are looking forward to hearing from our great panel of current Research Park interns. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted to highlight a few events that we do have coming up um, that uh, I'd like to bring to your attention. So um, really quickly, if you're not familiar with Research Park, it is a technology hub with over 120 companies that range from startups to Fortune 500s. Um, they are able to offer year-round internships, so part-time during the school year, full-time in the summer. And so today we'll hear about what that summer experience uh, is really like. But these interns that we have for you um, that are speaking today actually have experienced um, part-time during the semester as well. So there's going to be some really interesting uh, uh, advice from them that they can and insights that they can provide. Um, we will be... Uh, the the companies in the research park are able typically hire freshmen to PhD, domestic and international students. They employ students from all majors and colleges, which again, you'll see today, it's really more about skills and experience-based hiring. And these are all paid internships. Um, so during, uh, when we're able to be on site, research park is very easily accessible by bus, by bike and, even though it's on campus, there is free parking, which is pretty amazing. Um, as well as uh, right now, we are seeing uh, the majority of companies being virtual, but we're kind of, there are a few be in a hybrid model. Uh, John is actually in the office today at Motorola Solutions. So it's exciting to, to see that, um, that the research park companies were, are able to be flexible. All right, so today's um, a, a few events that I wanted to plug is that on March 2nd, uh, from 3 to 7 p.m., we are having the 2021 Research Park Career Fair. And uh, if you are still looking for a summer internship, there is going to be a lot of opportunity still available there. Um, look forward to meeting our sponsors, PNG Smart Lab, Motorola Solutions, and um, we also have Corteva AgriSciences and Granular as sponsors. Um, there is, if you go to our website, you will be able to find the career fair page uh, where there's a registration link and there's just one Zoom registration link that you can get to. We also have an Ag Tech Sum Innovation Summit coming up on March 10th from 4.30 to 6, or Mar Wednesday, March 10th from 8 to 4.30. Lots of really interesting panels if you're interested in the intersection of technology and agriculture. At the end of that, we will also be having uh, a career mixer from 4.30 to 6 p.m. So that's a good opportunity to connect with those companies that are using technology to transform the agricultural industry. On Thursdays, uh, we have, if you have questions, even after this panel, feel free to stop into our office hours every Thursday from 12 to 1 p.m. No registration or anything required, just check out our Research Park calendar and you'll be able to um, get that Zoom link to join us for that. Um, one, I'm not seeing, I thought there was one more slide, sorry, but uh, we also have one more panel coming up next Friday from uh, 12 to 1 p.m., so Friday, February 26th. This will be another internships panel, but you'll be hearing from the employers. So look forward to that. That is on our calendar. Um, unfortunately, I seem to have misplaced that slide, um, but if, again, you can reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, at uirp-jobs at illinois.edu with questions. You can sign up for our student newsletter um, or follow us on social media as well. So thanks, Cheris, for posting that. Um, she posted a link to our calendar so that you can see all of the great events that are coming up. Um, I see a quick question. Are international students who started their studies this spring eligible for summer internships? Um, so. It, that's a, that's an interesting question that the answer to that is maybe so some companies do hire through the university which would allow you to um, be able to get 
a position without, even though you're not eligible for CPT and OPT, my piece of advice is you'll be able to, in our informational booklet, it will indicate whether or not uh, the company is able to hire international candidates. And then that's an opportunity for you to connect with that company and then ask if they hire through the university. So that is the key difference. If they hire, if they hire you through a private organization, so their, their company or a third party private, um, third party recruiter, then um, they, you do need the CPT and it's required. If it's through the university, then you would not need the CPT, but it really depends on the company. Just check to see if they can hire international candidates and make a connection. And if you do have questions about CPT and all of that, as Grace said, um, IS, ISSS is really your best resource there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing so that um, you can hear from the panel, which is why you're here today. So, um, Today we have with us, um, and I realize I totally forgot to introduce myself. My name is Jenny Kim. I am the Assistant Director for Talent at the Research Park. And my main uh, role is to really help coordinate these types of events and help the employers and all of the companies in the Research Park to connect with student talent like yourselves, as well as helping the students understand what is Research Park and what are those opportunities. Um, we have found that the best, our best resource is actually to hear from the employers themselves and from the interns. So that's why we put together this panel today. Um, so today we have uh, with us uh, Apollonia Wilgus from Abvi. She is a visual designer. John Kim, a software engineering intern for Motorola Solutions and Grace Nee, who is a research intern for ASA, the American Supply Association, the next lab. Uh, moderating our panel for us today is Cherish Rosera, who is a research intern at Abbott. Cherish is a senior studying English and community health, and she currently works um, as a student researcher at Abbott Nutrition in the Research Park. So I will uh, let them introduce themselves further and pass it over to Cherish. All right, thank you so much, Jenny, for the warm introduction. So hello, everyone. As she said, my name is Cherish. I currently work for Abbott within the Research Park, which is Abbott Laboratories. They are a nutrition and science-based company. So what do I even study and how did I get there? I'm an English and community health senior. And the way that I pivoted was just explaining to them because I work with their health economics and outcomes research team that I can take your technical language and all that difficult knowledge and morph it into something that's super easy to understand. So that's how I was able to join that company and really make a difference. And I continue to work with them today, obviously. All right, so I'm going to move on into introducing our panel and let them speak for themselves. So first up, I'm going to go to Apollonia. Hi, everyone. I'm Apollonia. I am a graphic design major and I am currently a super senior. So I'm in my fifth year and I'm a visual design intern at Abvi. So Abvi is a pharmaceutical company that specializes in research and development. And you might be thinking, well, what is a graphic designer doing there? So I'm um, really grateful for the opportunity to be able to work with um, the Abvi Innovation Center at Research Park. Um, I made a lot of graphics for them at the beginning of my internship. And currently I'm working closely with the business technology solutions team, so BTS at AbbVie. And I've made a variety of graphics specifically for um, the sustainable um, accelerator that they've started called Spark. Um, something like um, designing a magazine. So I recently was working on a project where I designed an 82 page magazine that um, encompassed the different stories of the program and how it was begun at AbbVie. All right, sounds super cool. Can't wait to hear more from you, Apollonia. And next on our panel is Grace. So Grace, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. My name is Grace Nee. I'm a junior studying accounting on campus, uh, and I'm also an international student. So currently, I hold a business, business analyst intern position at American Supply Association, the next lab at the research park. I know it's a long name because we do have a lot of letters, you know, attached to our company. 
So we started fairly uh, late at the research part. I would say we started last year actually um, during the summer. So I was the first starting crew for our DNEX Innovation Lab. So what do we do there? What is American Supply Association like essentially? Well, we are, we are facilitating um, American plumbing distribution industry and we are doing uh, research to help facilitate that industry is for all the distributors to but to be better off for their business and to help them to help them essentially compete with other competitors like big box stores um, Home Depot Lowe's etc so we're doing all kinds of cool initiatives to really start some data-driven decision or data-driven techniques into this industry Nice. Thank you so much, Grace, for that great introduction. And last but not least, I'm going to go to John from Motorola Solutions. So go ahead, John. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is John Kim. I am a senior studying computer science and economics with a minor in statistics here at U of I. Um, I'm currently working at Motorola Solutions, which uh, we're a high-tech software company uh, dealing with mission critical services. Um, Land Mobile Radio is kind of our flagship product, but we're also heavily in the video and analytics space um, and also cybersecurity. Uh, so I'm a software engineer here, so that means I write code, but I'm also a team lead, so I get to oversee some of the other interns products as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. So before we get into questions, so panelists, hold on to your seats. Just want to give a quick reminder to everyone that if you have questions, please type them into chat. Uh, Jenny will kindly interrupt me if it's something that's super relevant to what we're talking about. Otherwise, she will ask you to hold it until the end. But yes, please remain muted and pop your questions into the chat. All right, so without further ado, we're going to get right on going over here into our first question. So first question to our panelists, what is your favorite UIRP research park experience that was in person? And what was your favorite experience that was virtual? I'm actually going to jump right back to John. So John, tell us a little bit about your favorite experiences. Yeah, sure. So I'll give a general one and then one specific one. So I think generally uh, one of the most, or one of the coolest like in-person experiences was just getting to eat like lunch outside this past summer every day and kind of mingling and seeing all people from other companies and chatting with them. Everyone's really friendly. So that was a lot of fun. And then specifically for Moto Solutions, we had like a in-person volunteering event where we went to volunteer at a food pantry. So that was super cool. Nice. Are there any virtual experiences that you found super valuable to you so far? Or is it mostly like the in-person that sticks with you? Personally, I think in-person experiences were, were more impactful for me, but I think some of like the seminars that Research Park offered were pretty cool to go to. Um, yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah. For those seminars that John just mentioned, we do offer over the summer some really great workshops specifically for interns. Uh, it's called the Summer Intern Workshop Series. So you can tell it's really built just for you. It's a really cool perk of working within the research park. So yeah, I'm going to turn to Apollonia now. Do you have any favorite in-person experiences and favorite virtual experiences? Oh, do I? Um, I will never forget the summer of 2019 when we just had like such a very energetic and wonderful team working in the office. And I somehow convinced many of my coworkers to participate in Yoga at the Pond with me, which was a fantastic event that we had for free, where we got to um, be led by a yoga instructor and try different types of poses and meditate and sort of um, reflect and relax after a busy work day. So that was really fun um, and really stood out to me. Um, virtually, it, it's been kind of weird in the beginning, but I'm really grateful for um, Jerome and Kirsten from the AIC for always trying to put on these virtual events. And we've had so much fun playing charades, um, two truths and a lie. Um, I somehow convinced people that I adopted a puppy over quarantine. Of course, my cat would never let me. Um, so it's just been, it's been really nice being able to still connect with people um, via like Zoom and other means of communication. Nice. Would you say that you value the in-person and virtual experiences equally? It sounds like you have a really great time with both. 
I would say that I do. I value both equally. I do miss like in-person contact, but um, for my job, I would be um, communicating with some of my bosses and um, project leads through um, Zoom or like a web video type situation anyways. So it doesn't really change much aside from the fact that I'm not sitting in an office with other student interns. Yeah, I can definitely see that. So before the whole pandemic thing happened, a lot of offices, and these offices still have it, obviously, we have student focused spaces where we can work together and collaborate. It's a really fun space. Obviously, now we're following social distancing procedures, even if you are allowed to be in the office. So you have less of that cramming and jamming and just running over to someone saying like, hey, I need a little help with this. But even the virtual experience is still super valuable. And we definitely think that you can value your experience in either way, if you get to have that hybrid or if you don't get to have that hybrid experience. All right, so last but not least, Grace, I'm gonna to turn to you. Do you have any favorite in-person or virtual experiences? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will say I had more in-person interaction overall than virtual um, because we were such a small team. So on last semester or last summer, we were able to work in the lab and have that in-person interaction. But for virtual experience, honestly, for our team, we actually get into our office having that round table and call in together to attend that intern uh, events or intern workshops. So every time every other company's like interns were zooming in as individuals, then they would just see us a block of like five people there sitting around the round table and shouting different answers to on that intern workshop, I thought that was really funny. It was a hybrid and weird situation because we were technically in person, but attending some virtual events that Research Park provided. And as far as in-person experience, I really enjoy that feeling being at the lab because in our lab, um, we have, like I mentioned, a big round table, then we have individual workstation. Whenever we have a discussion, we'll go to that round table everybody will grab a free drink. Well, it's definitely not alcohol for sure, uh, but like free bubbly. Then we'll get there and um, then stay maybe three hours arguing about different topics. And um, sometimes these argument gets really intense, but still we have that sense of community. We are um, creating some values to our membership company, um, so-called plumbing distributors, and we have these kind of like data-driven solutions that we are providing to them. So in a team, I really feel like that in-person experience enhanced that team dynamics. It really allowed us to have that sort of constructive conflict and really bringing the true value to um, our membership companies. That's great. Yeah, I, I really want to jump on the idea of community building because that really is what Research Park is all about, right? So you have your own community within your office, all the people that you get to meet. You have the community that you build in the Research Park at large whenever you go to events, especially at intern events where you get to just mix and match with other people from other offices. It's a super fun environment. And I do remember, Grace, whenever you would show up on calls with Acid Tea Next, you would just have your group there. Uh, on the call, we would see all of you and then you would have other interns coming in individually on their feeds. But it was really cool seeing you all participate as a group as opposed to separately. I thought that was that was super neat. Um, I guess for myself, I think one of my favorite in person events is fire at five. So before my experience as a student researcher for Abbott, I was a senior communications project management intern for the research park. So I was helping with their marketing efforts, helping with events, all that fun stuff. And fire at five is a really great community based event. You have food, you have activities, it's open to families, it's family friendly. And it just brings everyone together after maybe it was a stressful month, maybe it wasn't. It's just a matter of community building and free food doesn't hurt either. <laughs> one of my favorite virtual events is actually just one of the workshops that we had. It was about startups pivoting through COVID-19 and we had just moved into the virtual realm for the summer, so this was last summer. And I, I was just interested to hear about all the companies that I had been surrounded by, what were they doing to solve anything? And 
that was my first instance of realizing what the research park does is address the problems, not just like maybe in the future, but in the here and now. They jumped on it immediately. You've had companies like Syrianics, for example, that really jumped on it and made new masks that are available for purchase, by the way. <laughs> not, <laughs> not sponsored by them, but they are wonderful human beings. Um, and it, it's you, you open your mind to entrepreneurship and a bunch of other things that you never otherwise probably would have encountered in your classes. All right. So speaking of learning, we're going to jump into our next question. So John, I'm going to rotate back to you. But what would you say you have learned by being an intern at UIRP? Um, so I think just in general, it's kind of cool to learn about different corporations and what they do and their cultures and even things like how they hire like i've talked to like some of the managers here like and it's pretty cool like they have different hiring philosophies so hearing about that stuff is kind of cool and then also just through the course of working at my internship course i've learned a lot technically um about you know the, the projects that i've worked on nice ampelonia do you have anything that you've learned by being an intern with uirp I've learned so much um i'm really grateful for both of my internship experiences I remember submitting my first application and being so scared and like worried that I didn't know things and I just went for it and it was so wonderful. I learned a lot um, within the Adobe suite, like Illustrator and InDesign just from working on projects and from tips from my coworkers. Um, I also learned how to communicate better. I learned how to be more, um, how to not be as afraid when presenting um, and be able to lead meetings and communicate professionally with my bosses, which was a really great experience. And I think that it will really help when I'm applying to um, professional and full-time roles once I graduate. Yeah, and that's great. I, I can definitely second that. It's interesting that the research park really really takes you beyond that academic realm of yeah yeah I got a group presentation I learned about teamwork I learned how to do presentations this is a whole new level where you are simultaneously expected to be independent you got your own work to do but you have to learn how to approach people in a professionally casual way to say hey I need your advice on something you also need to be willing to ask for help when you need it that's a struggle that some people have I know that I still have that sometimes but being in an innovative and welcoming environment really invites you to step out of your comfort zone and start asking questions. Cause that's really the only way you're gonna learn at your peak. All right, great. So do you have any, any, um, anything that you've learned by being an intern within UIRP? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, just echo that Apomodia and also John mission is really a combination of soft skills and hard skills, right? So from a technical side, I learned so much, let's say from my first experience at UIRP. Just a side note, I also worked with Cherish doing that summer, same summer, and also um, with Apollonia as well. So we were co-workers on that A team. And um, well, we, I was a multimedia intern, even though we don't call that anymore. I think it's under the bigger umbrella of communication right now. So for technical skills, definitely learn how to use Adobe Suite, learn how to use Premiere from my technical aspect, right? How to edit video, how to make them, how to have the better storytelling techniques, how to communicate more professionally. These things are the things that you can't necessarily gain from your classwork because nobody will teach you that, right? So you have to learn from your experience. And also on the soft skill side, really teamwork. We are still here, right? We know each other, then we develop such a strong bond with each other. Uh, even though right now we work for a different companies, that bond doesn't just disappear. Then we know how to work with people better on uh, how to have a stronger team, how to know each other better and how to have that constructive argument that I was mentioned earlier, because you know it's not gonna be rainbows and sunshines every time. Sometimes you have some conflict, you have some little storm even uh, within your team. How do we reside with that? How do we still keep together as a team? And how do we, you know, leave with that conflict and move forward um, to provide greater value to this whole team to achieve the team goal. So I think these are all the things that I learned from my experience and I'm still continue to learn um, from my current experience as well. 
yeah teamwork is so big in the research park makes sense because we just talked about collaboration but something that maybe you might have picked up on at this point is you learn fast-paced environment on the ground hands down that's just one of those things that you probably don't get in your academic experience you know what deadlines are we all have them but no having that pressure while also still gaining that ability to ask questions, there's no place like it on campus because you know that you will get the help that you need in response to that fast pace that people expect you to crank out work with, right? Um, so all that support and all of those typical resume words that you probably have on your own resume right now, these are things that you can definitely build within the research park environment. All right, so going into tips for people who are probably interested in joining the research park. John, we're gonna go right back to you. What is your number one top tip for people who want to apply? You know, I'll cheat a little bit, I'll, I'll give two. So one is be prepared. Um, I mean, obviously just general interview questions, right? Be prepared to answer, you know, have your resume ready. Um, it's a great group of companies. So, you know, try to stand out. And secondly is be enthusiastic because um, I've been helping out with recruiting actually um, yesterday and the day before. And I can't tell you how many people I've spoken to about internships who just seem like they don't want to be there and they don't know anything about the company. And I'm just like, why are you here? Why, why am I talking to you? You know, you, you clearly don't want the internship. So yeah, be enthusiastic, like try to read up on the company, you know, know what they're about. And uh, yeah, I think that's the best tip that I could offer. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I used to dabble a little bit in interviewing other potential candidates as well, especially for the social media positions at Enterprise Works, the startup incubator of Research Park. So I can definitely speak for having enthusiasm. Be happy that you're there, or at least if you don't feel like it internally, try to display that. We want to know that you want to be with us. So. Yeah, definitely a really good pro tip from John there. Apollonia, do you have any top tips that you want to share with applicants? Yeah, I do. Um, so proofread your resume, guys. Uh, well, you don't want to be applying for a copywriting role and misspell some words. Um, that's You'd be surprised at how often that might happen. So make sure you do that. And if you're applying for a design role, make sure that you have um, a well-designed, neat resume. That's also stands out. Um, if you're a designer, you want to have a nice resume and make sure that your portfolio is nice and clean and organized and ready to go. Oh yeah, the spelling mistakes abound, happens all the time. I'm pretty sure we've all seen it. So if you're ever needing a second set of eyes, you can always go to the Writers Workshop. They are doing virtual appointments here on the U of I campus. You can also visit the Career Center and some university departments also have their own Career Center. So if you don't wanna bug your friends, bug the people whose job it is to look at your resume and cover letters. So there's that additional pro tip for you, <laughs> tagging along with Apollonia. But yeah, Grace, do you have any top tips for potential applicants? Yeah, definitely. I would say be open to all different kinds of opportunities. Uh, if you don't know about one company, go ahead and do some research, right? You can find them on their website. You can, you know, talk to people. Normally, they will have an, an email or somebody who held a position at the company to be available to reach out, right? Ask questions to them, understand what they're doing. Would that be something interesting to you? Or would that be possibly something that you can learn? Because not everybody is like, when you are born, you know exactly what you want to do, right? So there are so many, many opportunities out there. Be very open to these things. Uh, just don't limit yourself within your own box. Try to reach out and try to have more knowledge on the future job or future internship that you might want to apply. Once you have done that research and recognize, wow, this might be something interesting to me, then you know you will feel more passion or the enthusiasm them that Joan mentioned earlier. Uh, and then you have more motivation to walk into that interview room and prepare the best of yourself um, for the interview. It's funny that you say that you should be willing to go out of the box because I remember when I first met you, Grace, and you had told me you were studying finance, but I knew you as a multimedia intern. That was mind-boggling to me because I didn't understand 
how you wanted to make those skills work. But for you, it was just about, I know that I want to develop these skills because this is my hobby and this is something that I love. And this is going to take me to the next step of making it to another internship here in the research park. And you did that. You're at ASA DNX now. So um, this is a message to anyone who's hanging out with us right now. Even if you can't make it to say, an immediate software engineering internship, for example. Maybe there's another hobby that you can grow out by being in another parallel internship in a way. And then you have those little stepping stones in order to make it to where you want to be. Speaking of that, I think my top tip is a little bit related to myth dispelling. So the research park is often seen as the place for STEM, only for STEM people. Uh, it's not, I am seated here as a humanities major, largely. I am heavily an English major, even though I am a dual degree student with community health. So think about it like this. You're looking at a job description on the job board. Jenny posted those links in chat for you. And you see that major, you're just like, wow, I am not at all in geese. What can I do about it? Look at the skills. Maybe you have those skills already. You just develop them elsewhere. That means that it's still fair game for you to apply. And don't forget that the worst thing that people can say is no. <laughs> so you don't risk anything by sending in an application. And of course, uh, Grace kind of alluded to this. You could even set up informational interviews. You can often find contact information for various site directors or just people you can contact from companies on the Research Park website. So if you're like, eh, I don't know if this company is gonna vibe with me, send them an email. The worst they can do is not reply. So what do you have to lose? Just put yourself out there and just remember, hiring by skill is the way to go and keep yourself open to possibilities. Think outside the box. All right, so now that we've given people some top tips, people might be wondering, okay, what are our internship experiences like? So John, we're going right back to you. How would you describe your internship experience in person and or virtually? Yeah, so I would say, I would call it very connected is how I would describe it. So we were working, at Mo Solutions, we were working in teams of six or seven people and we had about, I wanna say like maybe 15 people in the office this past summer. We actually had a hybrid model. So some interns were online, some were in person and it was just really cool. Uh, I got to connect with all the people on the team cause we were working in the same office together. And even with the people who were um, remote because we had like a book club, movie club, all these kinds of things. We actually had an intern, like a community building intern whose whole job was to kind of plan events for us so that we could kind of get to know each other. And so, yeah, just getting to work with various students like from different majors is pretty cool, like really connected. Um, yeah, I got to meet a lot of people. I think that's the coolest thing because you get exposed to different perspectives and you learn a lot from the people that you work with. That's super cool. Yeah, everything feels super interdisciplinary. I wonder, do you know anyone's majors on your team that are totally separate from you? Do you have anyone funky like an English major by any chance? <laughs> yeah, I mean, for sure. Like we have an, like, we have a, an English major who does all of our social, runs all of our social media and does, you know, like runs all that for us. So like, just like, for example, yeah, what she, she like, what she does is she posts like things on social media when people get hired so that, you know, uh, the rest of Motorola can know what we're doing here at Research Park. So they don't think, oh, hey, you know, they're just some useless student interns doing nothing. Um, just to kind of show that we are actually doing really cool work and, you know, people are getting hired from full time afterwards. So, and yeah, there is an art student on our team as well. Yeah. So one of the cool things that we do is like, we have a series going on called the intersection of art and technology. So we have like an art student who's currently in Paris, who is like painting away for a semester, but he um, does these seminars with us where he like kind of teaches about art and about on, on like how they it connects with technology. And so, yeah, very different perspectives. So get to learn a lot in that regard. Wow. So yeah, we're going right back into collaboration, but we're adding that interdisciplinary <laughs> word to it as well. That's super neat that you're able to meet so many different people and collab across so many different colleges and majors and thoughts. So yeah, that's a really great learning environment for you. Apollonia, so how would you describe your internship experience in person and or virtually? 
Okay, just to clarify, my only in-person experience was when I was working at Enterprise Works as a graphic designer, and then for Avi, I started virtually. Um, at Enterprise Works, it felt um, it became like a family. So going off of what John said about being really connected and working on a smaller team, um, even the full-time staff, like you would see them every day and interact with them. And you learn to trust people. And also the types of people that work there are very passionate, very smart, very hardworking. And it's amazing because they challenge you and they challenge you in, in ways that make you better. Um, so it's a really great environment where you feel comfortable, safe, um, but also challenged and motivated to become better at what you're doing. Um, so that was, that was a really great experience. And virtually, um, it's been really great to, to work with different people. And um, like I mentioned before, I'm video chatting with my bosses that aren't in Champaign, they might be in North Chicago, or I was even working on a project for someone in Germany. Um, and um, for the sustainability um, initiative that I mentioned, Spark, a logo that I had helped design, um, I was able to talk to a team in Singapore that actually created these new like um, recyclable like gar garbage trucks and they put the logo on it. And it was just such a cool experience, like very surreal. And I was like, whoa, like here I am making a difference in the world. So it's been great. Wow, that's super cool. I I applaud you for that. Uh, that's not something that I think a lot of graphic designers think about when, when they first enter college to be like, yeah, my stuff's gonna show up right there in a different country. But that's that's super fascinating. But that also speaks for the fact that what students do is so wide reaching and that we are actually making an impact. Supervisors are not going to make you run coffee and they're not going to make you run meaningless projects stuff actually gets used. I'm sure, John, that you've coded plenty of stuff and that stuff is for sure being used. And I'm gonna to turn to Grace. I, I would be interested in hearing about how you would describe your internship experience and any impacts that you may have had. Yeah, absolutely. So I, was, I actually definitely echo is all the aspect that um, previous panelists mentioned because we had a book club too at our lab. Uh, <laughs> So we are a smaller lab than we only had um, six interns in total, I think, when we get started. Then we had um, book clubs for at least like once a month where we get to read some leadership uh, related books. They're not boring for sure. I love those books, honestly. Then we will sit down um, and eat lunch together, then talk about the book, talk about how we think, how we see uh, team building, how we see leadership working and our um, dear lady, um, or my boss, <laughs> Beth Led, at the, at the DNEX lab, um, literally buy us these books. So she is very generous. Um, so really, that was a fun experience. Also, speaking of different backgrounds, uh, my team is really diverse. So I'm a business background studying accounting. Then uh, I have another co-worker studying um, chemical engineering another one studying mechanical engineering. Pretty sure we have another coworker uh, who's studying math and statistics and all different kinds of majors. So it's really a part of everything because you know it's about innovation. It's not about accounting or any of the major. It's about a mix of knowledge and mix of perspectives. That's how we innovate new stuff, right? At the DNEX lab. So yeah, that's definitely something that I encounter personally as well. At the very beginning, we joke a lot about different perspectives because my coworkers used to laugh at me seeing me as too business. And I was like, oh, you guys are too engineering as well, right? So that engineering versus business mindset. Well, even more than that, right? Chemical engineering sometimes laugh at mechanic, you know, mechanic engineering and me versus anything else. So it was really a good mix of people who's there. We're all putting our best knowledge and you know, be very open to accept others' knowledge. That's how we create this combination of deliverables um, to our company or to the membership companies that we have. Then for our research result, we were able to put them all together as a presentation deck uh, and uh, also a data report. And we actually did a presentation 
to the whole membership. So we had about um, 500 plus membership on the call. Um, so we get to present to all of them. Then one specific company reached out to us and we scheduled another separate call to, you know, in detail and uh, explain these kind of foundings with them. Then it was a whole suite of C-suite people there, CEO, CFO, CIO of that big company talking to us, trying to know as much as they can from our research. So it's literally real impact. We're not doing some like cherished mission, coffee running thing or paper copy thing here. We are doing the actual work that people actually respect. And that's what they want. That's what they invested a lot of money here at U of I to build such an innovation lab or anything a uh, similar team like that at the research part. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, so I think the way that we can summarize all of our experiences then is that it's about making a difference with the melting pot that you're involved in. And sure, you're not running coffee. Uh, we, you might have noticed the jokes in chat. You do actually run on a lot of coffee. <laughs> Uh, you'll you'll find yourself with a Keurig very close by. I know that the office that Synchrony has, they offer, I believe it's Oberweiss ice cream consistently in their freezers. There are different perks. Uh, we won't necessarily touch on those perks in, in this panel, I don't think. But if you're interested in them, you're more than welcome to ask about what the student office spaces are like and what they involve. But yeah, no, coffee. We do have that. All right. We are slowly inching towards time, but I do want to at least get to this question. So John, we're gonna rotate back to you. How has your internship experience differed between the summer and the normal academic semester? Yeah, sure. So summer kind of operates more like a typical full-time position. So 40 hours a week, um, you know, give or take, obviously. Uh, pretty flexible even then. We kind of can choose your set your hours except for some core hours but um yeah just kind of full time in the semester though um it's been it's operates more like a you know like a typical part-time job depending on the company i think it's hours that can vary but here at motorola it's about 10 to 15 hours a week you know you can set your own hours lots of flexibility so yeah it's it's a nice job to work at um while you do school honestly just because it's so flexible it's interesting that you say flexible. Apollonia, would you would you second that at Abby? Is that kind of what you're experiencing? Yeah, um, I got to set my own schedule. Aside from the fact that you do want to schedule some hours in the morning when like full time staff are working for meetings, but other than that, I would say it's pretty flexible. Nice. So, would you say that there's any other strong differences between the summer and the academic semester or is it pretty much the same experience for you? Oh I would say it's different because like John said so over the summer it's more like a full-time position like you're doing your typical nine to five um, and in person it was very different because you were at the office like all day so like you had to make sure like pack a lunch or like order food and like you would have a lot of face time with those around you um, virtually at home um, it's a little more difficult to like focus so like you have to set up like a nice space for yourself to work um, to get through the day and over the, during the school year it's a little it's different because you have to balance like your classes and all that so you have to be um, make sure that you're really good with like time management skills but it's it's really it's a really good job to have like john mentioned because they are understanding that you are a student um, not a lot of jobs are like that so if you just communicate, communication is key. Um, like maybe that you're having too much on your plate right now um, and you can work to resolve that issue. But it's, really, it's a really good job to have as a student. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's very easy to approach a supervisor and say, hey, I've got two midterms coming up and I know I've got three projects on my plate. Is there anything that we could do here to help with my workload? And people are willing to work with you. And I feel like that's super important, especially since the research park is focused on students. Grace, is there anything that you'd like to add about what's different between the summer and a normal academic semester when you're working? Yeah, I think I was second uh, Apollonia and also John here. 
So it's really flexible um, in the academic year. And I think the group can feel the consistency here, even though we're working for different companies, that all the supervisors understand you are a student and they understand you, your priority should be your academic performance. Well, that's what Beth told me. So we had this conversation towards the beginning of the semester being like, okay, how, how many hours do you think you can work for DNEX? And what are, um, what's your schedule? How can we schedule meeting based on your schedule? And how can we work around with other team? Then, well, if possible, you know, we have um, a constant team meeting time, either via Zoom, or if everybody is on campus and we might go to the lab because, you know, sometimes discussion just have to happen in person. Otherwise, it's not very efficient or effective enough. So we'll arrange that before the semester starts. Then when we move to the semester, we're more prepared to kind of see the changes of being full-time to part-time and also to deal with all different kinds of coursework. So um, at DNAX, we actually have like the first week of school um, out of work. I think we don't schedule anything uh, on first week of school just because people need to figure out what's going on with their academic stuff and with their coursework. Um, so we have that week free. Then after that, we'll start to circle back and slowly catch up uh, so that everybody feels comfortable Then uh, we can work back together. Yeah, so I think apart from the whole flexibility and the understanding of, hey, I'm a student, please help. <laughs> there's also this difference in energy and what you are doing in a way, because you'll always have important projects. Like we said before, nothing that you're doing is meaningless. But obviously, when you're working 40 hours a week, people have more time to train you in some intense stuff. But once they've done that in the academic semesters, they're more willing to pull away and be like, yeah, we can just give you this project. We trust you to get things done. But then that always comes back to you. Hey, don't forget, always be willing to ask questions, even if we gave you that super heavy, intense training in the summers. Um, but yeah, no, flexibility and understanding the student experience and that you are a student, definitely a common thread for all of us. All right, and this is our last question that will be open for questions from everyone who's attending. This should be a fun one. If you could summarize your UIRP experience in one word, John, don't try to don't try to squirrel around this one. One word. What would that word be? All right, John, you're going to go first. Yes, uh, my one word would be varied. Um, as you're talking about, like it's very interdisciplinary. So you know, you get to interact with people from all all different majors, colleges, and also. Um, the way that Motorola operates is that we take projects from teams all over Motorola. So I've gotten to work on um, projects that are very, very different from one another and learned about different, different things. So like I was working on a mobile application and then I was working in embedded software. Now I'm working on something completely different. So yeah, just being able to get varied experiences. I think that would be how I sum up my experience in Research Park. Nice, so we've got varied. Apollonia, what is your one word? I'm going to go with empowered. Um, both of my internships have really helped me grow professionally and personally, and I've gotten a lot out of them. I've become a better designer and faster too. So <laughs> it's just been a really empowering experience. All right, we got varied. We got empowered. Grace, what is your one word? I was going to say empowered, but absolutely, I just stole my word, but I would say inspiring, okay, it's a similar word, but you know, uh, yeah, my experience is totally a very inspiring experience, uh, and up to now, I've learned so much, both personally and professionally, uh, and then also including hard skills as well as soft skills, so the overall experience has been, well, helping me along the way and helping me grow as a person as well as a young professional. Thank you. So we've got varied. We've technically got empowered squared. We have inspiring and I'll give you fulfilling. So I would say that working at the research park gives you such happiness and satisfaction. You're learning on the job in that fast paced environment that understands that you're a student. And at the end of the day, companies understand that you're bringing a unique perspective. That's what makes you exciting. And that's what makes working at the research park so exciting. Stuff is built around you. You get to make an impact. 
forget running coffee. The coffee might as well run to you because you get to be the boss and own your own work and it is enjoyable. All right, well, it is 621 now, so I'm going to turn this to Jenny for any questions that she might have received. But thank you so much for listening to all of us ramble on for pretty much an hour. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. That was that was really, really great. A um, lot of exciting uh, things that you're getting to do, a lot of great advice. So we'd like to open it up right now for any questions that we have from the audience. Um, feel free to type it into the chat or um, you can unmute. So we do have a question from Christine. Um, what do you think made you stand out from other applicants? Great question, Christine. All right, I, I'm gonna turn that to John because you talked about enthusiasm earlier when you were helping out with the interviewing process. So what made you stand out? Would you say that it was enthusiasm or would you say it was something else? Honestly, yeah, I I actually got to talk to my boss about this. Uh, like, you know, why why do you hire? Why did you hire? You know, specific people, and def part of it was definitely enthusiasm and like just knowing a little bit about the company and just being prepared. So I think, yeah, I, I it sounds generic, but honestly, being enthusiastic and knowing about the company that's what'll make you stand out. Like, if you leave an impression um, on that person, that'll make you stand out. Nice. Apollonia, did you have the same experience? Because I know that you moved from EnterpriseWorks into AbbVie as well. Yeah, so I was just really, well, I am really passionate about design. Um, and I guess that si shines through when I talk about my portfolio and my work. And I also had a pretty diverse portfolio, which stood out. Um, I had my design work, um, maybe some painting and also like photography. So they knew that I knew how to work a camera so that being diverse in your range of skills helps. Speaking of diverse skills, Grace, <laughs> this would be a great question for you to answer as well. What made you stand out from other applicants? You can talk about enterprise work, so you can talk about ACID next. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will say still read the job description first, right? Like know what exactly you are applying for and what they are looking for. Um, try to have that match with your skill set with that job description so that you know you're the best fit and the company would know that you are the best fit as well. So it's important to show your passion and show your enthusiasm, but still, you know, you got to have the hard skill because uh, essentially end of the day, it's going to be a job. So I would just kind of like tie us back on the ground a little bit at this point. Yeah. So funny enough, all of it, all of it just comes down to, are you passionate and do you know about this job? <laughs> but it's also a matter of when you're seated there, everyone's got that sense of nerves, right? I don't think I've met anyone that doesn't feel relatively nervous going into a presentation or an interview. Channel that to talk about yourself. This is your opportunity to brag about all the cool skills that you have, every opportunity that you've had before this moment. So if you can transform that fear into really great energy to hype yourself up, that can make you stand out because then you exhibit all that passion and your ability within the interview when you're talking with other people. All right, Jenny, do you have any other questions? Did I miss anything? Yeah, we do have one more question and great advice all around. Uh, we constantly hear from the recruiters uh, that it's it's all about the matching up and all about the enthusiasm. Um, you know, and think about it your in in terms of when you hear from companies and it's super generic message, what feeling do you get about that? Same way when you are approaching um, a company or a recruiter that you really want to make sure you're helping to connect the dots and that you've done uh, some research and you understand what they're looking for. Um, so yeah, we have actually a great question from Maggie asking, what are some challenges that you've encountered at work? Oh, that's an interesting one. John, do you wanna take this one? Yeah, for sure. Um, I guess definitely interpersonal um, challenges or problems. I mean, working in a team, you're always going to have some issues that arise. And I think I've learned a lot about um, like conflict resolution and just work about working in a team in general. But yeah, I would say those are that's like the thing that is maybe hard, I guess. Everything else is, you know, it should be chill. It's, it's a job, you know, it's not your life. But yeah, when you get into conflict with people, which is inevitable. 
Yeah, I'm going to jump to me actually when it comes to conflict. When I was at Enterprise Works working as a communications consultant for various businesses across Illinois, my biggest struggle was ah, maybe it was just getting responses and working well with people when you couldn't necessarily meet them face to face. Grace is laughing at this. She has heard me <laughs> discuss my issues with clients occasionally, but you'll get around that by taking a step back. And you have to remind yourself, these people are also human. They have their own lives. And at the end of the day, this is going to be a helpful and beneficial relationship. Sometimes projects take a while to get done, but it's your job to make sure that you get it done and you get it done right. Um, and of course, done is the new perfect. I've adopted that from Laura. So thank you, Laura. <laughs> and it's something that you should carry with you while you come across very strange and difficult clients sometimes. But yeah, I'll jump to Apollonia. Is there, <laughs> yeah, is there any challenge that you've encountered while you've been at work? I'm smiling because similar situations like working with clients, um, it's always give and take. Sometimes the client really knows what they want and they will like, won't let you sort of put in your vision to it but sometimes they're very open and willing to like have you put your creative spin on it so it's just about being flexible and reading um into like what the client prefers and like what's best for the end result um and also this is something that i didn't even think would be a problem but technology problems um wi-fi i think i got kicked out of like two or three meetings this past semester and it's been so awkward because one time i heard them like say like where did she go um but just being real about life and how it is right now so just sending an email and apologizing if your router just turns off <laughs> Yeah, it really is all about being human, isn't it? Grace, is there any challenge that you've encountered at work? Yeah, absolutely. I would say the learning curve that you will face once you just join that internship, uh, it's going to be huge, right? So I, I joined DNX with no knowledge about plumbing or plumbing distributor or supply chain whatsoever. Like if I throw out these Whereas it's not, they're not even technical terms and you have no idea about this industry. So guess what? You're going to learn, right? You're going to do a lot of research. You're going to read a lot of industry report. Then uh, our company actually have a lot of training programs for us as well. Then whenever there is a project that you think, okay, it might be cool if I can use Qualtrics for this, if I can use Tableau for this, guess what? I'm not an expert to it. Then I'm going to learn. So it's really about learning growing, then apply what you learn to your job. So I think uh, that would be something that I say, see as a challenge and also as a growth opportunity. Definitely can second that. See this as a growing opportunity. If you're on the fence about applying to any position in the research park, like we mentioned earlier, the worst people can say is no. Be willing to pitch your skills. Be enthusiastic. This is a really great place to be. If you want someplace that is student-centric, that lets you genuinely make an impact, if you want actual numbers to add to your resume, this is the place for you. It's just about finding a company that matches well with your values and also is looking for someone with a skill set that you have. So, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up right there. I'm going to pop my LinkedIn into chat. So if anyone wants to connect with me, you're more than welcome to do so. Laura and Jenny have also added their LinkedIn pages. I invite the panelists to put in their LinkedIn pages as well. But Jenny, you can now take it from me. Yeah, great. Thanks so much. That was all great advice. Um, all things that we've also heard from the employer side. Um, and we, you know, we're really glad that you're all able to join us today. We like to try to provide students with, you know, so like somewhat of an unfair advantage by attending our events and hearing uh, directly from interns that are working with these companies about what it's like and, um, you know, how, how they're able to, um, how they were able to get their positions. Um, 
So throughout the event, I have popped into the chat. We have our Research Park Career Fair coming up March 2nd. And so there are still a lot of opportunities available. Um, I also put links to the Research Park Career Fair, uh, Research Park Job Board, which has the current opportunities, but that does not necessarily mean that's all the opportunities that are available in the Research Park. So I also put a link to our company list or tenant directory that um, also that has the full list of research park companies, including contact information if you'd like to reach out directly. And those email addresses, they do go to the person who is managing the Champaign Research Park location, even if it's a generic email address. Um, so, you know, do a little bit of research, think about how you can contribute, um, take a lot of the advice that you've heard uh, about what has allowed these interns to be successful, put that into an email and you, you never know where to lead. Also, Research Park is not going anywhere. So think about the long game. Maybe this summer you already have something lined up or this summer doesn't work out. That doesn't mean you can't get something next fall, next spring, next summer, or and so on and so forth, depending on you know how many years you have left on this campus. So definitely take advantage of research, uh, research Park is just um, not only an experiential learning opportunity, but also a professional development uh, opportunity. And as Laura just put into the chat, jobs are getting added all the time. Uh, yesterday during the career fair, we had three jobs get added while we were at the career fair. So um, it, keep checking all the time, jobs are going up all the time. So thank you again so much for coming here. And um, please do, I, I say take advantage, we have just four of the 800 interns that work in the park that we're speaking today, but that's a really great way to um, learn about the research park and potentially, you know, have a, a little referral, right? Even if you have a short conversation, um, an intern turning to their manager and saying, hey, this person took initiative to reach out to me. They were really personable and I think their skills fit. That's somebody I'm gonna interview before I even turn to my, just the applications that I get. So um, thanks so much to our panelists. You guys were great, so much great advice. And before we head out the last wrap up, yes, the raffle. So I would like to announce, and hopefully he is still here. Yes. Uh, so Nate Wallander, you are our raffle winner. Um, we have your mailing address. So we will be sending you um, some Research Park swag. So look forward to that. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Thank you yes. so much, guys. And thanks for putting everything together. It's been awesome. Great. I hope you uh, learned a lot. And I hope everybody learned a lot. So um, I encourage you all to connect with each other and with the interns. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to connect with me and Laura um, or attend our office hours. Just keep an eye on our calendar. We have a lot of events going on um, and we hope to see you again soon. Take care. Have a good night.